Good morning, student. Today we will study chapter nine. Today topic is the living organisms and their surroundings. So let's discuss in detail. If you look around your surrounding, you will see different organisms from small to big, and they have different living places. Some organisms live under the water, while other on the land. Some fly in the sky like birds while other crawls like earthworm and make burrows under the soil some live on water like lotus while other live in hot and dry land like cattle and camel the place where living beings live is called their habitat for example a phone is a habitat Inside the pond, you will find different organisms like small fishes, insects, frogs, etc. A porous is also a habitat. It is a home of different kinds of animals like tigers, lions, elephants, eagles, squirrels, and many others. The bodies of animals are specially designed to live in their own habitat. For example, squirrels have sharp claws which help them to climb on the trees. They also have a strong back legs for jumping among the branches and big tail to keep them steady when they jump. And another good example is moles. Moles live under the ground. They have feet like spades for digging their tunnels. Plants too live in specific habitats. For example, Cattles live in hot and dry desert. They can survive with very little water. Lotus grow in water, while many other plant species cannot survive in such plenty of waters. Now let's discuss adaptations. Adaptations means the features or characteristics which make an animal or a plant better suited to its environment are called adaptations. Let's try to understand this with an example. The desert is a place where very less water is available. At the same time, it is very hot and dry. It seems no living organism can survive there. However, there are two organisms, uh, cattles and camels, who adapted to live in such a harsh climatic conditions. Camel has adapted and developed mechanism to live in hot weather. Some of these adaptation includes legs are long, which helps to keep the body away from the heat of the sand. Its feet have thick large soles, making it suitable for walking on sand. A camel can go on without food or water for many days. A cactus plant also shows adaptations in its root stems and leaves. Now let's discuss types of organisms on the basis of habitat. Organisms can be divided into two groups, plants and animals. Let us discuss one by one. First, types of ant plants on the basis of habitat. First point is hydrophytes. Hydrophytes means those plants which live in water is called hydrophytes, like lotus, water lily, water chestnut, etc. Second point is mesophytes. The plant which live on land with sufficient water, like most herbs and trees, are called mesophytes. Third point is xerophytes. Plant which live on land in dry climatic conditions or having little water like cactus, babool, bear trees, etc. are called xerophytes. The second point is type of animals on the basis of habitat. So this can be discussed under three points. The first point is aquatic animals the animal which live in water 
is called aquatic animals like fish. Second point is terrestrial animals. The animals which live on land like cow, horse, elephants, etc. comes under terrestrial animals. Third point is amphibians. Amphibians animals which live both on land and in waters are called amphibians like frogs, toads, etc. Arboreal animals. Arboreal animals which live on trees are called arboreal animals like squirrels, monkey, etc. Now let's discuss the component of habitat. In a habitat, two types of components occurs. These are living components, also called bio biotic component. The living component consists of plants, animals, including humans and microorganisms. Second point, non-living components or abiotic components. A number of factors influence the habitat and survival of organisms. So these are as follows. The temperatures, the light, water, air, and soil and rock. So these components or things are help in the formations of non-living components or abiotic components. Now let's discuss adaptation in different habitats. First let's see adaptations in some aquatic habitats. Aquatic animals so following adaptations. First fish have streamlined body which helps in reducing frictions and helps in swimming. Second, fins of the fish help in swimming. Third, the fish have special organs called gills which helps in extracting oxygen from water. Now let's see some adaptations in terrestrial habitats. Animals like yaks and snow leopard live in very cold places. These animals have thick skin and fur which protect them from cold. Birds have hollow bones and feathers are present. Their forelimbs are also modified into wings for flying. Now let's see the common features between living and non-living things. In order to understand this, let's take some examples. Lion, elephant, stone, chalk, etc. So, what is the common things between this? The common thing is that all these things are poses, mass, that is weight, save and occupy space. Both the living and the non-living things have a structural unit called cells in the living things and molecules in the non-living things. Now let's see the differences in living and non-living things. In simple word we can say that all living organisms have life and that distinguishes living matters from non-living. Now let's discuss characteristics of living things. First point, cellular organizations. All living things are made up of cells. A cell is a basic unit of life. Some living things consist of only a single cell, for example, amoeba, yeast, and bacteria. Such living things are called unicellular organisms. However, most living things are made up of millions of cells. They are called multicellular organisms, for example, man, dog, cat, mango plant, rose plants etc. Next point nutrition. Food is required for all living things. It provides us energy to do various activities during the day. It helps in our body growth as well as its maintenance and repair. Animals obtain ready-made food in the form of milk, bread, wheat, eggs, meat, falses, 
fruits and vegetables. However, green plants prefer their own food. Through roots, they obtain water and minerals from the soil. For preparing their food, plant requires carbon dioxide, water and mineral and sunlight. The process of food preparation for plant is called photosynthesis. Next point we have respirations. Respirations means the process of inhaling and exhaling. So during respirations we breathe in oxygen from the air and give out carbon dioxide. In plant exchanges of gas mainly take place through the leaf. Plant receive carbon dioxide and in return the release oxygen. Next point we have growth. Growth means the act of growing or getting bigger or higher. So growth is a permanent and irreversible process. Once you are old, you cannot return back into a young or a small baby. Next point we have excretion. Excretion means removal of waste material from the body. A living beings waste materials are removed mainly in the form of urine, sweat and carbon dioxide. In case of plant, carbon dioxide and water vapor are excreted through the leaves. In some plants, waste are given out in the form of gum or a thick fluid called latex. Next point reproduction it means the ability to produce young ones of their own kind for example a cat give birth to a kitten who grow into a adult cats next point movement it means the, an act of moving so all living beings move in search of food and shelters in case of plant stem moves toward light and roots grow downward in soil in search of water. Next point we have response to stimuli. A response is an action which takes place as a answer to a particular stimulus. A stimulus means something that causes an activity. For example, if you suddenly touch a hot object, you very quickly withdraw your hands from it. So this reaction is called response to stimuli. Next point we have life cycle. Life cycle is followed by every living organism. In case of animals, the life cycle consists of birth, growth. Growth includes different stages of life like childhood, adulthood and old. Reproduction is to give young ones and that the period during which an organism completes its cycle is called its lifespan. Some of lifespan of organisms are bacteria 20 minutes, pea plant 4 months, house fly 1 to 4 months, dog 16 to 18 years, man 60 to 80 years, tortoise 120 to 150 years so tortoises can live for many years some of you may have the questions are there things in between living and non livings the answer is yes there are viruses which exist in our universe this virus can grow and multiply only when they are inside living things like man and outside the living things they cannot survive. Students, we have discussed all the important points from this chapter and I hope you understood very well. Thank you.